pro-Palestinian. Well, another organization, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, FAIR, a very respected media, media watchdog organization, did a similar study, uh, actually their study preceded our studies, of NPR's coverage of deaths. The researcher who did this excellent work, Seth Ackerman, discovered that NPR was reporting Israeli children's deaths at a rate of about 90%, and it was reporting Palestinian children's deaths at a rate of about 20%. Now, does this kind of reporting continue around the country? What about smaller newspapers around the country? We found that typically the reporting actually gets even worse in other publications, partly because many of the, the deaths of Palestinians are reported in the, the very last paragraphs of newspaper reports. And so naturally when a newspaper is cutting uh, a long news report, they cut out a lot of the Palestinian deaths. In some cases, for example, with the San Francisco Chronicle, which used to be my newspaper, we discovered cases, however, where there were deaths reported of Palestinians, in, in one case of a nine-year-old boy who had been killed. The death was reported in the news story, as I recall, in about the third paragraph in the wire service report. The San Francisco Chronicle foreign desk had cut out that paragraph of the report they, they printed in their newspaper. So we've discovered, for example, with a six-month study we did of the San Francisco Chronicle headline uh, coverage of this conflict, that they were reporting on Israeli children's deaths at a rate 30 times greater than they were reporting on Palestinian children's deaths. Another small newspaper, also in California, that's where I'm, I'm from, but I'm finding these are typical. We've done these studies of Connecticut and Oregon as well. But for example, with the San Jose Mer Mercury newspaper, we did a study of their, their front page coverage because again, front page coverage is very significant. And we discovered that they had in fact reversed the reality on the ground. In other words, their headlines made it appear that more Israelis were being killed than Palestinians. And in fact, by a, by a great percentage. Uh, this is just extraordinary when you think about it. Consider if the, the Mercury News or our, our networks had reported the World Series backwards. Imagine if they had reported the winner to be the loser and vice versa. They would be the la laughing stock around the country. Everyone would notice, you know, late, late night comedians would be making jokes about it. Here we have a situation of life and death with this kind of error being committed daily and no one is even noticing it. Um. Now again, let's look at what this omission entails, because mainly what we, what we discovered was omission. And of course, we all know the most effective lying is lying through omission, because no one even knows what's missing. So by omitting so many of these deaths, it also omitted what was the cause of their death? Um, what were these people like? What was going on? We discovered that in looking at children's deaths, we especially looked at the first month and collected the data we could gather on the Palestinian children who had been killed in that first month. Keep in mind that in that first month there had not been a single suicide bombing in Israel. There had not been a single roadside bombing. There had been no bombing. No, uh, not a single Israeli child happily had even had, had died yet in this conflict. And yet we found that child after child after child in the Palestinian territories had been killed. And as you'll notice, as you look at these reports, the largest single cause of their death was gunfire to the head. This we have found repeatedly to be the case. We also, of course, this omission and our reports didn't cover the injury rates, but Palestinians have been injured in also far greater rates than Israelis have been injured. For example, we discovered that in the first three months alone, 159 Palestinian children had had eyes shot out. Now where did that fact come from? Certainly not from the New York Times. We didn't get it from, quote, Palestinian propaganda. This was reported in the Israeli newspaper Haaretz, a very respected newspaper in Israel. We need to know these facts too. Israelis are getting these reports. Americans should also get them. Finally, in many ways, perhaps the most significant omission in our media's reporting 
is our own connection to this conflict, um, the American connection to it. We need to always know that factor. And it turns out that unlike my initial impressions, it seems so long ago now, five years ago, uh, where I thought this conflict was basically irrelevant to me, that I didn't have much to do with it, I've learned that Americans are major players in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict because we give over $10 million per day to Israel. In fact, when you count up everything, all the loan forgiveness programs, the weapon, weapons subsidies, uh, etc., the amount of American tax money to Israel is approximately $15 million per day. Now, if this sounds like a lot, that's because it, it is. It's off the charts of our foreign expenditures abroad. We give to Israel, which has a population of about 6 million people. Uh, that's the size of the San Francisco, the Bay Area, for example. We give them more than we give to all of Sub-Saharan Africa put together. This is a very important statistic to know. We give more to Israel than we give any other nation on Earth. Why don't more of us know this? Are we just lazy, uh, self-absorbed people? I, I don't think Americans are that bad. I think most of us try to do a good job. And those of us that try to uh, read our New York Times, listen to our uh, network news coverage, it turns out that they are not reporting this. We did a study, for example, of the San Francisco Chronicle. During six months of reports, we found that the Chronicle had run many, many news stories on this important topic. In fact, you would have thought it was ample coverage. They were running more news stories on Israel-Palestine than some local issues of, of great importance. And yet, we, we counted up how many times the Chronicle had even mentioned U.S. aid to Israel and found that out of that over 250 stories, they had only mentioned aid to Israel three times, usually in the, the last sentence of a story. And how many times had they given the full accurate figure of the amount of aid that, gives, that goes to Israel? We found they had never once done that. Sadly, what I've mentioned here today is really just the tip of the iceberg about the, the coverage and really lack of coverage of Israel and Palestine. I cannot suggest too greatly the profound seriousness of this situation. This is potentially an apocalyptic situation as we see the tragic war in Iraq, the discussion of perhaps warfare, certainly sanctions against Iran, against Syria. This is promoting regional instability of the greatest danger to the region, to all people in the region, to the entire world, and certainly to Americans as well. We need drastically better coverage and fuller coverage of what's going on. We need the full facts. Our children, I feel, I have three children, I feel that our children are being placed at serious risk by American policies. Now, other Americans can and should draw their own conclusions, but they cannot draw informed conclusions without having full, unbiased information, and we're not getting that yet. We won't get that until we all demand it.